Welcome to Frontend Web Development. In this video, we will learn about inline, internal, external CSS and how they behave in different scenarios. Let us start with inline CSS. Inline CSS basically involves in writing CSS for in particular HTML elements. Inline CSS are will apply the unique styles for individual elements. Let us look head back to our coding part and check how does that behave. CSS types. Paragraph tag. Let me write the content as paragraph one. In element html element called p tag here write attribute called style equals write the properties now for example i would like to apply blue color to that blue and let me apply the font size as well to 30 pixel let's run this code there you go on a similar note, let me apply with another tag, paragraph two. Let me change the color to red. And let me apply for 20 pixels. There you go. Blue color with 30 pixel, red color with 20 pixel. Now, you can apply this kind of an inline CSS for each and every element you would like to apply. Second type of CSS is inline CSS. You might have noticed in previous videos, we have written inline CSS, where we start them with style element, style tag, within the head tag, and start writing, start picking the selector. Let me this time pick the selector called P selector, Select our element. Let me give the color as aqua. Simple. Let me run this. You, you would see that this aqua color is not applied. This is because whenever there is a conflict between inline CSS and internal CSS, inline CSS would take the hand. Inline CSS would take over the internal CSS, right? So let me change the color or keep it okay. Now, do I want, but still, if you want my color to be applied for all the PE tags over here, then make use of the other type of selectors called class selector. Let me write here my arrow. Right over here. Instead of P, let me apply class. How do you apply the class selector, please? Dot my pattern. Get it now. My pattern. Color. And the same thing, please. It's a class is also not taking over there. Then, but still you would like to apply, then go for it and ID. Call my ID as an Arrow one. Let me copy this. Write this as an arrow one. Since it is an ID, let me start using pan symbol over here. Still not applied. What do you notice on it? Inline CSS is taking care, and it has been overtaken with all other possible ways. Inline CSS is given higher priority than any other thing. On a similar note, let's look at the external CSS. External CSS, name itself, it is trying to tell us CSS is written in an external file. Let us write that. Let me create a style.css, start writing it. For example, let me start my paro like it's already been taken over there let me write my paro equals 
color is some brown. Color is brown and font size is 50 pixel. Let's look at it. Now, how do I link this in my HTML? For that, use the tag called link. For a moment, let me try to comment out this. Link element, relation equals to style sheet, reference equal to the file, please. Dot slash styles dot CSS. Let's look at it. Is it really happening? Same thing, please. External CSS been overridden by internal CSS. However, internal CSS has been commented here. Internal, and that is also been overridden with an inline CSS. For a moment, let me try to comment out this part. It's taking over. Let me remove this part. Look at this now. See that it's in black in color or the brown seems to be the like my para id is in my para one let me check out here yeah it's my para please my class name is dot so i'm using my para as in class there you go it's in brown in color so what do you infer from this please there are three types of css external internal and inline external css will be overridden by internal CSS. Internal CSS will be overridden by inline CSS, no matter if it is in class and ID selectors as well. Inline CSS is given at most important. See you in the next video.